This brave group of 100 pilgrims risked their lives to seek religious freedom and at the same time helped lay the foundation of what would eventually become the United States of America. Before the YMCA would form or the Gideons would start distributing Bibles, first the gospel had to reach America. You can't have a theme like to the ends of the earth without talking about one of the most famous religious ventures of all time. Before America became the great nation it is today, it took some seriously dedicated people to make the journey. As much as they get the majority of the credit, the Pilgrims weren't actually the first European immigrants to land on the east coast of America. Although the Mayflower's perilous pilgrimage started on September 16, 1620, in reality, their journey starts in 1534 with Henry VIII deciding to break away from the Roman Catholic Church. On November 3, 1534, King Henry VIII created the Church of England. He appointed himself the head of his own church with his own rules, basically so he could divorce his first wife, Catherine of Aragon. Despite this seismic fracture in the church, many people believed that Henry's new church was still way too similar to the Pope's and wanted even more changes. Some wanted to separate it by getting rid of all Catholic practices. They would become known as the Puritans. The Church of England started dictating all aspects of life, everything from what you could eat to what you could wear. And disobeying these rules was a quick path to ending up dead. Amongst this persecution, the Puritans decided that the only way to form a new group was to break away entirely. And this is what drove the Puritans to the New World. The Mayflower ship is responsible for bringing some of America's first pilgrims. Upon the ship were 102 brave souls. There were 50 men, 19 women, and 33 young adults and children. Only 41 were true Puritan pilgrims seeking religious separation and freedom from the Church of England. The other 61 were considered common folk, merchants, tradesmen, craftsmen, and indentured servants. These European transplants would be the seed that would one day grow into the United States of America. The journey was organized by the Virginia Company, a trading company chartered by King James I with the goal of colonizing parts of the eastern coast of the New World. Stockholders in London financed most of the Pilgrims' voyage with the understanding that they profit from any income from the new settlement. According to their contract with the Virginia Company, their intention was to lay anchor in northern Virginia near the mouth of the Hudson River, where they had been given land on which to settle. But the 3,000-mile journey wasn't an easy one. The ship was only designed for hauling cargo and in no way provided any of the comforts of a passenger ship. Along with over 100 passengers, the ship also had 37 crewmen to house. The pilgrims were confined to the gun deck, a suffocating, windowless space between the main deck and the cargo hold below. Between all the supplies and cargo, the total available living space was just 1,000 square feet for over 102 people. Conrad Humphreys, a professional sailor and captain, reported passengers would have had to practically sleep on top of one another. People suffered crippling bouts of seasickness, damp freezing conditions, and survived only on stale bread, dried meat, and beer. Humphreys also says 
the journey would have been painfully slow, with many days of being blown backwards rather than forwards. To make matters worse, the closer to America they came, the more they realized how far off they were from their destination. The treacherous and violent Northern Atlantic Ocean had blown them nearly 220 miles north off course from their intended destination, the mouth of the Hudson River. Finally, after more than two months at sea on November 9, 1620, the storm-battered Mayflower limped under the shore at Cape Cod. William Bradford, a passenger aboard the Mayflower, documented their joy and relief upon arriving on land. He wrote, being thus arrived in a good harbor and brought safe to land, they fell upon their knees and blessed the God of heaven, who had brought them over the vast and furious ocean and delivered them from all the perils and miseries thereof. Although there were three pregnant women and dozens of children, amazingly, only one of the passengers perished on the grueling 66-day journey. One of the women even gave birth to a baby halfway through the voyage, a boy she appropriately named Oceanus. But arriving in America was only half the battle. Unfortunately, unrest broke out on board before they even disembarked. The non-Puritans started arguing the validity of the Virginia Company's contract. Since they weren't taken to Virginia, they were no longer bound to the company's charter. The non-Puritans also refused to recognize Virginia's laws because they were outside of its jurisdiction. And in Massachusetts, there was no official government. Pilgrim leader William Bradford later wrote that several of the passengers had made discontented and mutinous speeches. The pilgrims feared that if something wasn't done quickly, it would soon become every man and woman for themselves. Before they departed the ship and began their new life in the new world, they had to figure out some very practical ways for self-governance. They knew life here in the new world without laws could prove disastrous. Pilgrim leaders aboard the ship created a document ensuring everyone would abide by the same laws and that a functioning social structure would prevail in their new settlement. This document became known as the Mayflower Compact. month in history, on November 11th, 1620, the Mayflower Compact was completed and signed by 41 male adults aboard the ship. They elected John Carver governor on November 21st, 1620. The new leader seemed to calm the rising rebellion within the group. The pilgrims knew that productive, law-abiding people were essential to the survival and success of the new colony. With that in mind, the document they created was short and poignant. The main points were, the colonists would remain loyal subjects to King James, despite their need for self-governance. The colonists would create and enact laws, ordinances, acts, constitutions, and offices for the good of the colony and abide by those laws. The colonists would create one society and work together to further it. The colonists would live in accordance with the Christian faith. Once the document was signed, a new sense of camaraderie was rekindled. The hard work of building the colony could now begin. They started by sailing along the coast and sending search parties ashore to find an ideal place to settle. A few weeks later, in late December, they dropped anchor at Plymouth Rock. Here, the pilgrims formed the first permanent settlement of Europeans in New England. Unfortunately, things would soon take a terrible turn. The arriving winter brought deadly cold. Without proper shelter and food supply, the colonists were brutalized by freezing temperatures, disease, and starvation. It's said that more than half of the colonists perished during that winter. Miraculously, 
the Plymouth Colony survived. It's later said that the Mayflower Compact was crucial in solidifying the colonists' dedication to each other and their mission. After that winter, the colony thrived. More and more settlers would soon arrive and colonize the surrounding areas. With the Mayflower Compact as a central ruling declaration, a general court was established as an early form of government. Each town elected representatives to attend and vote on new acts and laws. The Mayflower Compact was massively significant in the New World because it was the first document to establish self-government. It was the first successful attempt in the New World to form self-government without the rule of a king. It remained active for several decades until 1691, when Plymouth Colony was absorbed by the Massachusetts Bay Colony. It undoubtedly played a huge role in future colonists wanting to seek independence from British rule. This brave group of 100 pilgrims risked their lives to seek religious freedom and at the same time helped lay the foundation of what would eventually become the United States of America. From Puritan Protestantism came all of the great American denominations we know today. 